If you are a fan of mysterious, crime, and horror stories don't forget to like and subscribe. This greatly helps my channel to grow and get this content out there. Don't forget to turn all bell notifications to get notified when a new video has been uploaded. 2-3 to three video uploads are put up every week. So not take any more time let's get back to our story. Thousands of recreational scuba divers descend each year into the crystal blue waters of the Red Sea in Egypt. Tanks strapped on their backs, masks cinched in place, they go ready to marvel at the colorful underwater life and spectacular coral formations. The blue hole itself is no more dangerous than any other Red Sea dive site, but diving through the arch is an extreme dive that has resulted in many accidents and fatalities. Lying at 184 feet below the surface, the arch is a 85-foot horizontal tunnel that leads from the vertical shaft of the blue hole to the open sea. At that depth the water becomes murky, the visibility becomes reduced, and the strong down current makes just entering the passageway a physical challenge. The number of blue hole fatalities is not accurately recorded. One source estimates 130 divers died during the 15-year period from 1997 to 2012, averaging over 8 per year, another claims as many as 200. This includes some snorkeling deaths at the surface unrelated to diving the arch. The Egyptian Chamber for Diving and Water Sports CDWS, now stations a policeman at the Blue Hole to ensure divers are diving with a certified guide who will make sure safety procedures are followed. The ceiling of the arch is 170 feet deep, which requires suitable training and equipment as 40 meters is generally considered the limit for recreational diving. The arch presents little problem for suitably equipped and competent technical divers. The main challenge is gas management because any delays or errors at this depth, plus the time to negotiate the horizontal section, will need more than a single tank of breathing gas to do safely. If gas is not carefully planned, the diver may lack sufficient gas for the decompression stops or run out of gas altogether. Below 56 meters, the sea wall stops, revealing a cavernous, 26 meter long tunnel from the blue hole to the open ocean. Those who descend 100 meters are faced with a 50 meter high opening to the Red Sea. It's beautiful, says Hayes, a diver that has attempted the dive numerous times. There's nothing else like it. It's like standing in an underwater cathedral. At 22 years old, Yuri Lipsky from Russia was already an experienced and qualified technical scuba diver, and on April 28, 2000, was more than aware of the unique challenges of diving deep into the blue hole, and he was more than ready for the journey down to the arch. But it can be disorientating. Divers have reported seeing light emerging from the tunnel, and believing it was the surface, have swum down to it. At this depth, it's possible to succumb to a condition known as nitrogen narcosis, in which breathing gases at high pressure causes mental and sometimes physical impairment. According to Dr. James Caruso, the chief medical examiner for Denver, Colorado and an avid scuba diver, narcosis is often called the martini effect where as the diver goes deeper, the intoxication increases in a similar fashion to drinking more alcohol. Much like alcohol, it affects everyone differently, but Caruso says, no one is immune from the symptoms and if a diver goes deep enough, he or she will lose consciousness. Add this to oxygen poisoning, where the gas becomes toxic under high pressure, and anyone continuing to breathe at this depth is on borrowed time. It's possible to counteract these effects with specialized equipment. Technical divers, such as Omar and Hayes, frequently swim under the arch, but it's an expensive hobby requiring lots of training and many are unwilling to put in the hours. As Omar puts it, they want to get into deep water, before they get into deep knowledge. Yuri Lipsky was one of these. Probably the most famous scuba death in the Blue Hole, the Russian-Israeli diving instructor became a household name in diving circles in 2000 after filming his own demise on a helmet camera. Yuri was acutely aware of the conditions awaiting him, all the pertinent information programmed into his diving computer to be viewed at a glance. With this crucial piece of equipment, he would know what depth he was descending to, the amount of air remaining in his tank throughout the entire time he was underwater, and even the amount of time the overall dive should take him. Further pre-dive planning had forewarned him that the arch could appear deceptively shorter than it actually was. Worse still, the incoming flow of water from the open sea had a tendency to lengthen the time it took to exit the passageway on the open seaward side. Compounding these challenges, was the odd descending angle of the tunnel itself. This feature had taken many unsuspecting divers by surprise, causing them to underestimate the depth they were descending to, and the amount of air they were consuming. With a finite amount of air in the tank, a miscalculation could leave Yuri with barely enough air to make it back to the surface alive. Constant vigilance was important when diving so deep. Still, Yuri had factored all this into his dive, had planned his route, his dive depth, and his bottom time. Everything. 
This was the standard operating procedure for such a challenging dive. What wasn't standard was that he was doing the dive alone. He wasn't concerned, he was well prepared, all his equipment was in perfect working order and he was confident in his diving abilities. Weights secured in place, his helmet camera primed to record this memorable dive, Yuri Lipsky took a giant stride into the tapering shaft of the blue hole and began his descent. His camera recorded the entirety of the dive. It showed an uncontrolled descent from the arch all the way down to a depth of 115 meters. Lipsky landed with an inaudible thud, shaking the recorded image. The camera continued to record as he rips the mask from his face, as he rips his regulator out of his mouth, as the last gasp of air is ripped from his lungs. The camera continues to record as he tries to inflate his buoyancy jacket, his disorientated mind vaguely comprehending that safety lies on the surface, 115 meters above. The camera angle changes, going horizontal, continuing to record as his body convulses one last time and ceases to move, alone at the bottom of the ocean. But what had caused Yuri Lipsky to react as he had may never be known. Perhaps it was nitrogen narcosis or air toxicity from the air in his tank. Lipsky's final moments are now on YouTube, titled Fatal Diving Accident Caught on Tape. The six-minute video has garnered over 8 million views. Though his face is never visible, his distress is palpable and haunting. What starts as a routine dive deteriorates into panic thrashing as he becomes more disoriented. Clouds of kicked up sand billow into view as Lipsky's breathing rate doubles. In the end, he removes the breathing apparatus from his mouth and the frame goes still. Tarek Omar met Lipsky one hour before his dive. He wanted to film the arch, says Omar. I said okay, so you'll need two weeks training with me first, and then we'll film. With only a weekend in town, Lipsky turned down Omar's offer and set off alone. Almost immediately, he strays from his diving buddy and begins to descend fast. He was too heavy for his buoyancy device, says Omar, who thinks the extra weight of a camera might have tipped the balance. He passes the point where narcosis sets in and by 80 meters, he's under the control of the sea. The video ends 7 minutes in when a thrashing Lipsky pulls out his regulator. The following morning, Omar retrieved his body from 92 meters down. This finishes our story of the day. If you still have not done it, please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. This is Criminal Mind TV wishing you a great day. Don't forget to stay tuned for the next episode. See you soon.